Hey, Tyler. Good morning. Uh, technically still, yeah, 1158. Yeah, still morning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good morning. So, did you get it? Uh, I think I got the I got the first one. Uh, I'm right now. I'm rewriting it because I realized that the uh, yeah, it has stuff to do with the um, what is it, Mandel Brand Broad or whatever. The, the uh, Mandel Stam. That's it. Mandel, Mandel Stam. Stam or, yeah, Mandel or, Broad is fractals. Yeah, fractals. Yeah, but, yeah, but. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I got I got the yeah, matrix it, element. It's I'm a little sure ambiguous. Is, uh, the the Mandelstam naming is a little ambiguous. Yeah, that's what I was noticing. So I'm going back and switching. So, it. So, you know, T and U. Yes. Could go that, the other that's way. Yeah, so, that's one. yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, other than that, yeah, that, those are a little tricky, and yeah, the normalizations seem to vary a bit. Uh, the um, I was forgetting to put in my two M for my spinner normalizations, and uh, and there is not a sign when you interchange the basis spinners. That's when you interchange the operators, the the amplitudes. So I've changed the notes on that. Gotcha. Um, but you know, uh, you know, signs and factors of two is about where I am on it. Uh, you know, I just yeah, well. That the interference term, I'm still, yeah, not. Yeah, the interference term is weird. Like I'm getting. Uh, I'm close. Yeah, the one the one that I'm getting is like uh, it's at the let's see that wouldn't be S B T, yeah, so it'll be like T times U minus S, and then I guess plus F. Oh no, that's not S again. That's U. No, it's T. It's T times U minus S plus T is what I'm getting. And then T some... times U minus S plus T. Yeah, that's uh, that's similar to what I'm getting. It's, yeah, it's, I'm... T, it's T, T distributed over the last three. Yeah, the last three. So it's like yeah, T right, U right. minus yeah, T. Yeah, so T cancels T with the denominator, the yeah. overall denominator, and you get it like a one over S times times that. I'm getting something very similar to that. It might, it might actually be that. Um, that makes no. me feel a little happier because that was the only one I was really concerned with. The other two, the the non diagonal, the diagonal terms were fairly simple. So yeah, it's, it's like just like U over, over S. U over S and S over U. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. What about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Eli Guillermo, how's it going? Uh, not too bad. Uh, very well. Um, I was good. sick yesterday, but I recovered. Oh, sorry to hear it. Yeah. Um, yeah, did you did you get the scattering cross section? Well, yeah, it, cross section. We, we're not to cross sections yet, but the the matrix uh, elements squared. Did you get it to work out? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was, <laughs> one of the things that makes these problems so long is you got to work them three times. Uh, it's uh, it's it's tricky to get those coefficients, but. Um, Let's see, yeah. Hey, Lyle. Yeah, sorry about the minus four. Yeah, that was all my doing. <laughs> so that's doesn't need to be there then. Yeah, the the four. I um, I had forgotten the one over two m squared, the normalizations on the basis spinners. And that's that's where the four was coming from. You you had the m squared, so you you did that right. And then the sign was because you do not did did you do that? Did you put in a sign interchanging the basis spinners? Because that yeah that was wrong. It's okay. it's the operators right the a and b dagger and those that anti commute. Uh, so they the should so it should be what I have written but with a minus sign. Just yeah one more minus sign. That's right. Okay. So yeah, you're spot on on that. Uh, yeah, the uh, the cross term is tricky. Um, and uh, let's see, if you have questions about you know how to work these out, we can you know throw some up on the board. Um, oh wait a minute, I want to. Uh, we're going to talk about um, about our summer meetings. So I was going to ask uh, I'm not sure if he actually wants to come but I'm going to invite Davis 
to to join us. Um, I, you know, he's done a little quantum field theory on his own, so he might be able to jump in. We'll we'll see, and uh, you know, he may be busy with some research projects or something, so we'll see. Um, let me think. We're uh, there's, we're just missing Alex, right? Yeah, Alex. Uh, yeah, I was I was supposed to zoom with Alex last night, and, uh, and Kevin too. What's that? And, and Kevin. Oh yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Yeah, where's he? Okay, well, we'll give them a chance to, to catch up. Um, yeah, I haven't heard anything from Kevin. I hope he's doing all right with this. Uh, he's, I know he's assiduously taken notes on everything, so I assume he's doing okay with it and is just being independent about it. Yeah, I've, I've Zoomed or emailed with all of you, I think, so I know you're pretty well on top of it. Do you have any questions on how to uh, square these matrix elements and work through it? You know, I mean, you know, we could- I have a question yeah. that's, that's pertaining just to me though. So I think I'm the only one who's not gonna be doing the summary of part two. So yeah. what, when do you want me to submit the work that I have? I mean, when, when do I like, cause I know everybody else will kind of keep going with their calculations, but yeah, right. So, um, well, I, I had said today, and, uh, you know, it's only fair to free you up after today, I think. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, give, give that interference term a try, though. Have, have you worked through that yet? Uh, we worked through it yesterday, um, but I need to write it out again. And I think, uh, yeah. I think we got it, though. Um, but I'll double check it and I'll have, I'll have, yeah. all, I'll have the entire m squared term today i think yeah okay great yeah that's that's really all that uh you know i they can ask for today i you know i started writing up a, a uh, the next chapter on cross sections and uh you know i would i would like to see you able to do just the relativistic calculations putting um you know putting in some actual momenta for these things uh, so, you know, suppose, say, the electron is at rest and you send a photon in along the z-axis, you know, what, what, angles, what angles do you see the photon come off at uh, with what probability? Um, you know, that kind of detail. Because there, there is still a bit of work to do to, uh, to do the relativistic reduction. Uh, I don't know how fluent you guys are with that. Um, let's see, I think I sprinkled a couple of exercises with that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cos theta minus one, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, uh, let's see, what, what's, what's an, uh, you know, an interesting one to do is the, um, oh, just electron electron scattering, uh, where, you, you see the one over, you know, sine theta over two to the fourth factor uh, in front of a whole lot of terms that you never knew were there. Uh, yeah, this, this one is not so different from, you know, what you might uh, write down, but uh, there's, there's a little more going on here. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering what we should do today. Uh, you know, the main thing I want to accomplish is to uh, answer any questions you have on this particular process. Yeah, Guillermo. So <clears throat> I've been, so I do have a question. I just want to see the setup and up to the trace. You don't have to do the trace part because I think we can all do that yeah. for the interference term because I've been getting it doesn't look pretty what, what the trace has to be. And I'm not sure if I'm doing it wrong or right now. Yeah, okay. Uh, let, me, let me get that. Um, yeah, I need to reload this file. Okay. And then, so, I 
I, where do I have this? Huh. Oh, I see. I'm, I'm loading the wrong file. Hang on, hang on a second here, uh, and I'll pull it up. Yeah, I keep. I keep renaming, uh, you know, say, saving the file under a different name. So I've got backups of previous versions. So let's see, this must be, uh, yeah, there we go. April 29. What is it? May 3rd now, right? Happy May. Yeah, there we go. So the, uh, the matrix elements are, first thing you want to get right. So let me let me put those up. Ah, here comes Alex. Hang on a sec. Hey Alex. Sorry about last night. That uh just <laughs> wasn't going to happen. Uh, you know, we were at these friends' place, and we always, uh, you know, they go to bed early. You know, so we were we were pretty sure we would be home by eight thirty. Well, it was like ten thirty, and too too late for a Zoom. So um, anyway, you know, I, we, I have I have yeah. parents your age, so I I know what happens. When y'all get half a bottle of wine, it doesn't. It's two. It's not. It's not. Yeah. Half. Well, this this was more like two bottles of wine and some bourbon. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I was trying to be nice in front of the the kids. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You you guys you guys didn't hear this. If that's sinful. <laughs> uh -huh. I, yeah. I don't. I don't. Liquor <laughs> okay. All right. Um, okay. So uh, yeah. Let Let's just take this from the top and you know, give a chance for any questions that anyone has. So at this level, and there are, oh boy, there are, there are a lot of techniques in QED. When you, when you start adding, adding loops, you get divergences and there are systematic treatments of the divergences, but uh, so what we're talking about are diagrams like this, where there's your electron and photon lines like this. And uh, I assigned um, I assigned K to the photon lines and P1 and P2 to the electron lines and uh, one to the initial state and two to the final state just as a way to keep track of things. And then this propagator is uh, one over P slash minus M. Uh, the second diagram, uh, we have a, a space-like channel. So the electron goes this way and, you know, still P1, P2 here. Four uh, check, by the way. Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, there, there is some ambiguity to, uh, we were saying earlier here, there's some ambiguity to T and to S. Or, no, sorry, S, no, S is clear, but uh, T and U, uh, it sort of depends how you label those final states. Uh, you know, in, in general, you've got two in and two out and stuff happens here. And so you have a, uh, P1 and a P2 in and a K1 and a K2 out. And if you label it that way, that's going to be different than this. So, uh, you know, maybe we need to establish some, um, some uh, conventions for the way we identify these Mandelstam variables. But if you've gotten T and U opposite from, you know, what, whatever I have or some other source has, uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Uh, it's, it's, it's in how you label these things. So now, 
Uh, and then we have the I over P slash minus M. And the basic difference between these two, uh, the, the biggest difference is, is in what this P is. Here, uh, right, the momentum carried in this channel is whatever comes in here minus what goes out there. So it's gonna be P1 minus K2 uh, minus M. Uh, in this diagram. For this diagram, the P is going to be the sum of these two. So we're going to have P1 plus K1 slash minus M here. And we're dropping the M and then the numerator will have that and uh, the denominator pulls out a, well, in this case, that squared is S and uh, this squared is uh, whatever you ended up calling the P1 minus K term, P1 dot K2. Uh, so either, either T or U, whichever way you identified your lines. Professor, I, so, have, a, I have a quick stupid question. Uh, uh, yes, no. Um, yes, question, no, probably not stupid, but what is it? It's, it's probably stupid. So, so like, so on the first die, on the top diagram, um, yeah. Uh, why why didn't you switch like why didn't you switch where where p two and k two are like uh is, is 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 yeah so is that because there's a there's a momentum conservation from left to right will it affect the answer does it does it affect the answer if those two are switched uh, uh because you just go against the arrow of time so oh, no you, you can matter. you can write them the other way around but it's the same process the the it's point the is same those, thing, right? those are distinguishable particles you know where you catch the photon you know where you you catch the electron. So um, yeah, I, I could I could draw with P two coming out here and the photon that way. That's, okay. Yeah. So so I, that's the I, same just pick, I just picked the other way because the two diagrams look categorically different with one going to the other side and one was staying on the same side. The the proton. So but it, in a general graph where you don't have commuting or distinguishable uh, particles coming out like a higher order graph, would you have to do both? Yeah. That, yeah then you have to do two diagrams. Right, then I got you. Really but in different. this case, since they're distinguished. Yeah, so, so yeah, if we uh, if we had uh, oh let's see, what 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 could we have? Um, yeah, uh, like you know, electron scattering. You know, if we just have electrons going through like this, uh, there's there's one case where this electron is detected over here, but then there's another case where they cross like that and the one you detect over here actually came from that vertex. And that makes a difference. Um, and when you interchange fermions like that, there is a sign that, that comes into the, uh, into the writing the matrix element. Uh, yeah, here, different particles coming out. Uh, you draw them either way you like. If it's clearer to you, the difference, but yeah, the, the real difference is this goes into one vertex that comes out of the other. Here, uh, well, let's see, what is it? Well, the final particles are coming from the same vertex. Whichever way you draw it, those are different processes. And I was wondering if there's the, like a physical way to explain, like, is one of these processes like the photon absorbed into the electron and then being readmitted and the other one is like an actual scattering off of? Like, I guess I figured that the U channel was the scattering off of and the T that the S channel was the uh, absor absorption? Let's see, okay. Um, first, a note of caution. Remember what you calculate here. So we calculate a matrix element for this process, a matrix element for that process, you know, process. Do either of these really happen? No, it's just like a photon going through a double slit. The photon interferes with itself. These two, these two processes interfere with one another. There are cross terms, right? So it's, it's wrong to say one or the other of these is actually what happened, right? They, they both happen and they both know about each other. They, they happen simultaneously and interfere. You think about it the same way you think about a double slit. Here's one slit, here's the other slit. And you, you don't know which one the, uh, they went through. That said, yeah, okay, so this, this electron absorbs uh, the photon, then uh, re-emits or emits another photon um, as it moves along. Uh, here, um, let's see what happens. The, 
Yeah. Yeah, well, you could almost say it the same way that the, the real difference is that, um, you know, the, it's, it's here in the propagator. Uh, the, this is a virtual particle. This is not observed. And if, uh, if, we had, if we had a loop here or something, oh boy, let's see. Um, if we had a process where, okay, this comes in and uh, let's see, what could this do? Well, okay, let's, let's do it this way. Let's, let's have this photon pair produce, uh, you know, e, e plus e minus here, something like that. Uh, you integrate over this internal momentum and that integral probably diverges. <laughs> um, the, uh, let's see. Now, I was trying to do something with this one and that's, I'm not getting it. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't really talked about the difference between real and virtual particles. Basically a virtual particle is anything you don't observe. So, so these, these are real and those conserve momentum overall. But these internal lines, uh, you know, there's, um, as long as the total momentum is conserved here, uh, you know, this, this could be pretty much any amount, you know, as long as you actually have a, a positive energy photon coming out. Um, yeah, a, uh, maybe, maybe a better example is, is if there's a photon emitted and absorbed here. So now the amount of momentum that circles in that loop is pretty much arbitrary. Uh, you could have a lot of momentum that way and it doesn't have to conserve anything except at the vertices. So uh, the, um, the, the amount of momentum carried in each of those channels, uh, it can be can be arbitrary. It you know it doesn't have to to make sense. You can create an extremely energetic photon here, as long as you uh, absorb it again there. Nobody knows. So it's so, almost like the boundary conditions. It's almost like a Green's function. Well, it is that obviously all the time, but it's almost like well, yeah, the but but, it's, uh, like, it's like the Green's function with the minus z. You've you've taken off the endpoint momentums and you're just matching it the you're letting the endpoints be fixed, but you're floating the inside momentum. In some ways, that's the probability. Whereas the other one, yeah, yeah, fixed uh, momentum. Yeah. So you know the the rule the rule with um, you know this whole Feynman procedure is you know anything that can happen between the beginning and the end will. Now it's not clear that's the best picture. I don't know if you guys heard um, the uh, uh, David Peake's talk the other day. Um, but the, uh, you know, he, he's, he's arguing that there's no actual evidence for vacuum energy. So, you know, when, when you put like, you know, you, you put, you put all these, uh, excitations on things. Well, you know, in the end, uh, that leads to an infinity that gen you then absorb into the observed mass. Maybe there's a way to do this without even including those diagrams. I don't know. Um, but, you know, is vacuum energy a real thing? You know, out, out here at the same time this is going on, uh, does, a, uh, uh, does this photon pair produce and annihilate? You, you can have a diagram like this at the next order, at, you know, two orders up. Um, is that really happening in the vacuum all the time? And yeah, what does really happening mean? Uh, you know, that's that's a little vague, and uh, you know, that's not observed, right? So, in fact, none of this is really happening. It's it's more that all of this is happening in some very complicated, interfering kind of way. Um, so, there. There are popular ways to talk about all this stuff, and uh, you know they they're they're being a little sloppy when they do. Um, yeah, sorry, sorry to derail, but my, my I, I was just the I, the reason I the reason I asked this this question was just because it seemed like the 
the, 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 the distinction between the two graphs was rotating on its side, but the arrow is the, the arrow direction is all you cared about. So I was just trying to get a general vibe of what the S versus U channels are. Like if you have a vague process, yeah. oh, well, the S, U is the inelastic part. The yeah. S, S, is, the S is easy because all the momentum goes in this, you know, time is up and, you know, all of the momentum of the incoming particles are in the S channel. Um, yeah, that one's easy to spot. You know, whether whether it's this way or that way, yeah, you might you might end up getting T and U interchanged. Um, you know, but as long as you've defined things carefully, uh, then you can put in the right cosines and sines in the end, so you'll be okay. Um, now, uh, a note of caution: when you see uh, these diagrams in the literature. They are often drawn with time progressing to the right. Uh, you know, so so you know, relativists will draw time going up, but uh, you know, there are other people who draw time going to the right. And so, if you're looking at that, then you know, then this is the S channel, and that's you know, that that interchanges what these diagrams are, and just changed all your labeling. Uh, so you know, be sure you know uh, when you look at someone else's. Hyman diagrams, which way time's going for them. Uh, it's, it's, there's just no consistent rule. And it's very confusing when you're trying to compare your results to someone else's and you suddenly realize that, oh, oh, they're, they're calling this S. <laughs> um, so, you know, there are clues, but they're really just clues. So we were going to write down these matrix elements and write down the, um, the interference term, and uh, yeah, you're you're allowed to watch Alex, uh, even though you may not have done this yet, because uh, I, I want you all to get this. Uh, you know. I think I, I think I actually I think I actually got it. So did you? Okay, great. I, okay. I think I at okay. least got M one squared. I was going to finish the interference in the other ones, but I think yeah, I got the, the, the interference is the only tough one. The yeah, the the two. Uh, the the two pure matrix squared ones, um, uh, yeah, actually they're they're fairly short once you you know get your technique down a little bit. But that was the, the that was the, the hard part. The, the interference term is the tricky one. So uh, uh, here we go. Uh, the the S channel um, matrix element. Uh, so all right, how do we do this? Uh, we're looking at this one and. Uh, so up here, we've got U2 bar. Down here, we have U1. Uh, there's, there's a polarization vector here. Uh, let me call it, what? Wrestling, I'm working. Yeah, really. And then up, uh, let's see, yeah, here we have a, um, let's call it beta, and uh, well, well, we can put those either place, but let me write lambda prime up here. Then uh, at the vertices, we have I, E, gamma, I'll call it gamma alpha here, I, E, gamma beta here. I'm making those positive because it's an electron that has a negative charge. So, so we just work our way through the diagram. I'm going to write uh, U2 bar, and then I come to the vertex and I write I, E, gamma, beta. And I know that's got to be contracted on this, on this um, polarization vector, and the prime, that one's conjugate. Then, uh, then we have the propagator. I over P slash plus K1 slash minus M. And, uh, you know, if you want to challenge yourselves further, you know, keep the mass. The Compton scattering, actually, the mass is important. I mean, you know, if you do a, you know, a, you know like a department Compton scattering, the, um, yeah, what is it? Cesium-137, is that what we said was the source yeah, that's of- probably like a common- source of radiation. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the the energy of that is comparable to the energy of the electron. And so you really need to keep the mass if you want to uh, make that prediction. 
And then you get like a couple more terms in the final result. Uh, so continuing here, now we reach the next vertex. And uh, so we have an IE gamma alpha, and uh, that's going to be contracted on a polarization vector. And we end up with uh, U1 over there. So that's the S channel matrix element. Uh, have I forgotten anything? Uh, you know, looks like the right stuff. Now, these, these guys, these polarization vectors are, uh, you know, they, they commute with everything. You just have to make sure that the one Lorentz index is summed on the gamma matrix. And uh, they have a normalization if we sum over the polarizations, star, uh, alpha, lambda, epsilon, um, beta, lambda. So if it's the same lambda here, not, not these two. These are, these are different lambdas here. But uh, if I'm summing the same lambda here, this is minus eta. Okay, so minus because we want the, the transverse ones to be positive. Uh, with the metric we're using. So um, uh, that we're, we're going to get two of these so that sign won't have had a, a, any deleterious effect on your calculation. Uh, you get two of them. Then for the other channel, and let's see, what are we calling this? Uh, T or U? Anybody have a you from the from the uh, from the notes, I guess, because it's got P one and K two, so it would be you. Yeah. Okay. You know, but again, that that depends on how we labeled our our things. I'll I'll call it U here. Um, I may have called it T in my notes. What do you know? But anyway, we write it. We again start with the final fermion U bar two. We, we come to a vertex here, i.e. gamma, um, I'm gonna call that one beta and gamma alpha here. Or you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call it mu and nu. Because when we put these two together, I've gotta to make sure that those Lorentz indices are different than the Lorentz indices I use here. So now we're gonna get i.e. gamma uh, what did I say, new, and then a polarization vector epsilon new, and that's that's this incoming one, so that one's real, and we have some, uh, I'll call it lambda double prime here, and then a propagator P1 slash minus K2 slash minus M, and then we have another vertex IE gamma mu, another polarization vector, this is epsilon star, mu and lambda, way too many primes. And finally we get uh, u1 out here. So I think, I think those are the matrix elements. Have I forgotten anybody, anything? Uh, yeah, no, looks, looks about right. So, for the interference terms, we multiply one of these times the conjugate of the other. It turns out that the answer is real, so you just get twice that. There are two interference terms, but they're equal. So that gives you a factor of two. Then, uh, let's see. So the, the question was writing the interference term. Um, should I take the next step and take the conjugate of one? Uh, let's, let's take ms times m. Uh, you conjugate like this, and uh, let's see, what are we going to get? So, uh, MS, we just copy this, U2 bar, uh, all right, let, let, me, let me simplify it a little bit because, uh, all right, we're going to take a conjugate, we're going to get two minus signs on these. We're going to get a minus sign on that that's going to give a plus one. So, uh, all of the evident eyes, uh, those two, those two will give one, and there are four of these in any case, and two minus signs, so that's going to give one. So basically, we just get an e to the fourth out here, uh, and that's that's taken care of all of the i e's. So then we have a u two bar, 
gamma, beta, epsilon, beta star, lambda. Uh, and then, all right, this, uh, if, I, if I drop the M, uh, oh boy, let's see, that's, that's like, yeah, we, ha we have a one over S. So I'm gonna write this as E squared. So um, when, when I normalize these, what I do is I multiply by uh, P1 slash plus K1 slash plus M, that goes in the numerator and I get this denominator squared, dropping M, that, that gives me an S, uh, an S. This, when I, when I multiply by this plus M, I get an operator in the numerator. Uh, it gives me a U here. So that means that it, in the place of this propagator, the I's are gone. I just have a P1 slash plus K1 slash plus M. Uh, whether I drop the M or not. Well, I've, I've dropped the M, so I'm just gonna write it this way, if that's okay. Uh, let's see, so we're up to here. We have a gamma alpha, then an epsilon alpha lambda, uh, and a U1 times the conjugate of this. So start at the back and conjugate everything. So we're gonna have a U1 bar, we're going to have an epsilon not conjugate lambda triple prime mu. Uh, let's see. What, what happens with these polarizations? Now, we'll worry about that in a minute. Um, uh, still coming backwards here. We took the conjugate. We have a gamma mu. Uh, we have um, the inverse of this thing, a P1 slash minus K2 slash, then an epsilon conjugate, lambda, uh, called it double prime, then a gamma nu and a U2. Now, yeah, the thing that's worrying me here is I've, I've written four polarizations and there really should only be two polarizations. Uh, what did I do wrong? Okay, um, here the polarization in is lambda, so this ought to be epsilon lambda here. The polarization out is lambda prime, so this polarization should be lambda prime. So the gamma mu here, that should be lambda prime, and that one should have just been lambda at the at the new index. Okay, so yeah, so one polarization in in both diagrams, but one polarization out in both diagrams. So I think this is the matrix element that we then, or the, the square, the cross term that we want to compute. Okay, any questions here? Did I get it right? Yeah, good, okay. So, so then, uh, uh, okay, this, we sum over, the two lambdas and we sum over the two spins. So we're gonna put a quarter because we, we average over incoming spins and polarizations. We sum over final spins and polarizations. So we're gonna put a quarter, a sum over S, S prime, lambda, and lambda prime. And uh, you can do the lambda, lambda prime right away. And let's see, those two are gonna give an eta beta nu minus eta beta nu and the lambda, the other lambda, wait a minute, one of these is prime, which of these is prime? Uh, beta lambda, that's prime. So these two give a beta mu. And no, you, you had it right the first time. It's cause the, you, you have to, it, uh, uh, the first one there should be should be like alpha shouldn't it be alpha alpha mu and beta nu let's see all right we were starting here so this first line should be this and we were starting up at u2 so the first place we come to is a conjugate and a beta 
So that's why I put the lambda prime here. We're good? Okay. Uh, so, so when I sum lambda prime, it's going to give me a beta mu. When I sum I think, lambda, I think it's the U, I think it's actually the, is it the U channel? Oh, no, maybe not. Well, Keep going. Keep going. I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can figure it out. Okay. Uh, so, um, yeah, so let me see. We get back to the initial state. So initial and final states, I, uh, my, my spins and polarizations, I have primes in the final state and um, no prime in the initial state. So this one on new is unprimed. Um, new is unprimed, okay. And, and that's a conjugate because we conjugated. And then in the first one, the unprimed one is on gamma alpha. So I think this is right. And then those signs go away. So, so just replacing all four of the polarization vectors with a pair of eta's, uh, making sure you get the, the right eta's. Um, yeah, first time I wrote this down, I didn't. But, uh, but we're good here. Um, you know, then to do the, to do the spins, uh, I put on indices and rearrange. And now, uh, actually, if, if you do just what I did, so you've reversed, you, you reverse everything here as you write it there, then uh, what'll happen is that this first and last one, okay, that's the U2 and U2 bar. You're gonna bring that, that closes the trace. The indices are actually already in order. It's, uh, you know, don't, don't trust that until you're sure of your technique. But, uh, you know, when, when you do it that way and are careful to reverse the orders here, then, uh, you know, in, including, you know, if you have two currents down here uh, and a photon propagator, you know, you interchange the order of the two currents. So you really flip everything, uh, then, then it actually works out. But what you're gonna do is uh, you wanna bring this U2 up here so that's an outer product and gets replaced by a um, P2 slash um, over 2M. And this one, uh, it's already U1, uh, U1 bar. That's gonna get replaced by a P1 slash. So uh, let's see. I don't know, should, I, should I write it? Shall we keep going? Um, or you want to go from here to tell me, tell me what's going to be most helpful to you? Up to the trace. Just so, just so it, up, up so to it the, looks easier. Okay. So, so we keep going. All right. So uh, let's see. Let me. So one quarter, the sum over all the uh, traces and polarizations, U star. All right, so uh, just um, being a little careful here for SU, so I get the quarter. And all right, uh, let's see. So let me, let me put, put the indices. So U2 bar has an index down. It's multiplying a gamma beta, which is an A up, B down. And you, you can just run alphabetically. We've gotten rid of uh, this. Let's see. So, so somewhere we have um, eta, uh, what do we say? Beta nu, eta alpha nu. So uh, I should put that in somewhere here, but I'll get it in a minute. Then we have. Uh, P1 slash plus K1 slash uh, B C, uh, then a gamma alpha C D and a U D up, U1 D up uh, times, um, let me put in the metrics here, uh, times, okay, a bar has an index down. And let's see, we've done D, so I'm gonna to go to E here. Then we've gotten rid of the polarization, the gamma mu, 
as an E F, then P one slash minus K two as is multiplied right in that's F G this gamma nu as a G H and this U two as an H. So uh, what's going to happen, sorry, I have to get rid of this, but what you're going to do is, um, all right, so let's, let's look at the order and let's look at what we're going to do. So every, everything's in order now because I just wrote it that way. But now all I'm going to do is uh, move the U's, all right? This U from the very end is going to go to the beginning. So I'm, I'm going to have a U two H with a U bar to um, A, and uh, that's summed on the spin, and so that's going to give me a P slash H. Uh, sorry, yeah, P slash H A. All right. And then P slash two. What's that? P slash two. Good. Thank you. Then the other pair, these two, uh, we have it. That's a that's a U one uh, U one bar. And uh, what indices did they have? They I had a D up and uh, an E down. So that's a P1 slash BE. And now, uh, if rather than me writing it all twice more, uh, you imagine these in place. All right, uh, these two become a DE. Well, that D is summed correctly and that E is summed correctly. So if I put this P slash right there, um, it's in order. That's a normal matrix product. So I, I uh, don't actually need the indices anymore. And then this one, uh, the P2 slash, that goes at the beginning. Well, the A down is summed properly. And then the H here to there is a trace of the whole thing. So, so this all becomes MSU star um, sum with a quarter. Uh, now, Seeing that all the indices are in the right order, I can drop the indices and uh, just treat it as matrix products. And so we have e to the fourth over four SU times, it'll be a trace. And now I can just read, okay, this is gonna be, this is a P2 slash gamma beta, uh, P1 plus K1 slash, gamma alpha, uh, then this becomes a P1 slash to here, then gamma mu, then P1 slash minus K2 slash, then gamma nu, um, and I forgot the eight is again, so I'm gonna squeeze them in here e to the fourth over four s u eta uh, beta mu eta alpha nu like that and then trace of that there's one two three four five six seven eight eight gamma matrices here so we're looking at a trace of eight i make a, a, a one well, i have one question and one comment uh the question is the m squared term, it's still there. You just didn't write it, correct? The in the denominator on the leading coefficients in front of the eight. Yeah, that's there's that's there. the four that I was chiding you about. That was my mistake. Yes, okay. uh, there there's uh, one over two m squared here. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's from the normalization yeah, of the use, uh, yeah these, these from the completeness relation. Okay, over two m. Yeah, I. Yeah. I keep forgetting those. 
So that was the com or the question. The comment is uh, when I did this, I did it uh, in the reverse order. So I did MU times MS complex conjugate. They're the same. And yeah, you get almost the same thing, except my P1 K1 or yeah. P1 plus K1 and my P1 minus K2 in the final solution are in the opposite locations. They're, they're, they're interchanged. Yeah, but I think the uh, trace is still going to work out the same. Yeah, the, the argument that I used was that, um, you know, these are, these, these are just complex numbers. And uh, since the answer came out real, the conjugate of this has to be the same thing. Um, but I, I didn't actually calculate it to check. Uh, so points to you for calculating it and checking. Um, did it come out the same? Did you do all the trace? No, I'm, I'm, I've worked down to a single trace of four. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. And I think it's going to be identical to if you work that down to a single trace of four. Yeah. And you, you can, uh, traces of four, you can, you can actually just write out because it's just three terms. You know, it's this dot, that times that. The dot of these two, then the dot of first and third, then the dot of first and fourth um, with a minus sign on the middle one. So, yeah. So the, the trace of four is... Uh, something that you can probably just write down. There are other tricks, um, you know, and in, in, you know, looking, looking through different sources on this, I, I saw some, some other, whoa, wait a minute. Bigger tree working for us. Uh-oh. We were laughing about us wearing glasses as physicists. And so I just wondered if, People hired physicists, gave them more money on average when they saw that they're blind, because it meant they've been staring at books and screens for their whole life. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. We said that because one of us spent four hours on an exceedingly long process. When we really I, uh, have a... <laughs> I expanded out the uh, the trace of eight. The first time I did it, I expanded it out completely in terms of uh, oh, so, uh, oh. Metrics. 105 terms. Yeah, so it made my eye. It made my eyes hurt. I had to go outside and stare at really far away stuff for like an hour oh, to get oh, to it. Oh. And then I did it again and did it in ten lines. So, <laughs> with using the <laughs> using the actual techniques instead of expanding it all out. <laughs> well, you know there. You know there. There are other tricks like um, what? What did I just see? There's yeah. A, I, I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, is the eta? It's beta mu, right? It's a little fuzzy for me. Beta, oh, yeah, beta mu, alpha nu. I'm pretty sure that's what we came up with. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, lambda, beta mu, and alpha goes with nu. And yeah, you can you can drive yourself mad doing these. Yeah, people get really good. I think the trick I saw. Let, let me just try it and see if it works. So if you've got a p slash you know, gamma. Uh, all right, so that's a P mu, um, gamma mu, gamma alpha. And if you write that as uh, half a commutator, all right, write this as the sum of half the commutator and half the anti-commutator. So the anti-commutator times a half is gonna give you an eta mu alpha. And then the commutator of two of these things, uh, let's see, what is that? I don't know, what's the commutator? Let's see, so gamma mu, gamma alpha. I'm not sure that helps, does that, does that help? Um, yeah, so, somehow. Wouldn't it just be like minus one half the, the... The flip the of gamma mu gamma alpha is equal to minus gamma alpha gamma mu uh, plus twice eta alpha mu. Let's see. So if I subtract this from that, yeah, so, somehow, no, I'm, I'm not seeing it now. It's just alpha. like, wouldn't it just be eta mu alpha minus one half? Eta, or not eta, eta mu alpha minus one half gamma alpha gamma mu. You just split the two and subtract it off. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. And you, you know, you can certainly, you can certainly do, do that standard thing, right? Just, all right, P mu is minus gamma alpha gamma mu plus twice eta alpha mu. Yeah. So we can do that. And uh, yeah, so minus gamma alpha. No, but we've been using that trick all along. I've already uh, shown you that trick with the um, Baba scattering. Yeah, this, this was something else. And they actually used, it was, there was a U next to it. Yeah, I think so. The one, the one that I that I derived in here at least was that I think the contraction of the gammas over uh, over a slash p slash is two negative two times the momentum without slash. That's at least one useful thing that's close to this that I was using. Um, yeah. Well, just just use it. You know, moving one of these past the other. I mean, you're you're constantly trying to interchange these guys, right? And this is minus the same thing in the opposite order, plus twice the alpha, right? You know, this is the thing that you use a lot in this. Um, there are other tricks, you know, and um, yeah, maybe we'll discover them and get good at them. Because I, I think that now we need to do some more QED, right? Let's, you know, do another process, mod scattering or, uh, uh, electron scattering. I, you know, I forget the names of all these things. Um, but I had, I had a question on the on the Bubba scattering example uh -huh. you gave. Kind yeah. of so in this in this process, um, when you did this, when you did this, or like finding the orthogonal basis, um, mm -hmm. it, there were minus signs that were coming up. Um, in the when you were commuting, is that that's from when you're um, commuting? A, sorry, yeah, I was a little confused uh, on that. I oh, guess. yeah, those were that is was it, wrong. Is it when you're I, 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 I'll correct myself once again. Um, you know, I, I was thinking that when you interchanged a U and a V or a U and a U, you needed to get a sign, but you do not. There is no sign. You can rearrange these things all you want. It's, uh, it's the mode amplitudes that are the operators that anti-commute. So fermionic operators anti-commute, but the U's and V's are not fermionic operators. They're just, they're just some fixed vectors they're just a basis back yeah, yeah they're trying. just they're just a basis so yeah so um the next time i post the notes you'll see that i've gotten rid of those signs they they all came out the plus one anyway but uh they're they're no longer in the notes that well they're they won't be in the next version of notes let's say that because um, we're kind of treating these vectors as like our field over the operator stuff right they're 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 like we're treating them kind of like as scalars over the bracket because they're 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 independent of it, right? Yeah, they, uh, these are just like, some fixed complex vectors. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, we can we can move them around all we like as long as we keep track of what indexes contract on what other index. They're just just like any other vectors. It's just we have two different spaces going on at the same time here, but. That's no problem to you folks. Because they're but 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 that was the magic is we connected them both through the spin through the the gamma matrices. That's the coupling. Yeah, and okay, so they both have so the same algebra. Here's the generalization. So what 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 would you do differently if you actually uh, ran the initial electron through a Stern Gerlach device so that all of the electrons were spin up? What would be different? Like so, there wouldn't there wouldn't be these etas. So instead of getting a contraction, would you have to like, you'd have a floating variable? Like I, yeah, right. So, so we, we no longer would still be have, left unfixed. We would no longer have the sum here. So what we would do is, in, instead of this being the normalization, we still have the completeness relation. It's just that the product of two of these guys is, um, uh, what do we have? P slash uh, let's see, um, what was it? One plus P slash over M. I forget what our projection operators look like now, but you would have a, an S, an S slash here. You, you would, you would have that spin projection. I, I forget yeah. that. I forget gamma the five maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I think there is a gamma five here, uh, one way or the other. Uh, these I've, I've written these, uh, in the notes, yeah, uh, okay, here it is. 
So, so the product of just two of these, the outer product of two of these is, um, yeah, one over, one over four M, um, M plus P slash, uh, S slash gamma five. So, and then, you know, and then there are similar things for the, for the other spins. This is for, uh, uh, this would probably be for a spin up and the spin down would have a minus sign here. So if you're, uh, if you're measuring uh, the initial, final, or both um, spins, then you use this full replacement in, instead of just the P slash plus M like we've been doing. When you add two of these, you get one over two M. That's where the two M comes from that <laughs> Lyle keeps reminding me I need to put in. And uh, so if you, if you track the spins, then you need the spin projection as well. It just adds one more set of gamma matrices to your whole trace. So you can still write it all out as some big trace. It's still gonna work. You can replace any outer product of your two basis spinners, two you know, basis spinners for the same momentum for, uh, you know, with some kind of projection operators of gamma matrices. Uh, for polarizations, same thing. If, you, if we were to send in polarized light and Compton scattering, it's no longer as a mutually symmetric. Right now, you know, there's a preferred phi in, in the final answer, uh, which we need to get to. And I am, yeah, I'm, I'm almost there. Uh, you know, I need, I need to post, um, I need to post notes on uh, decay rates and uh, cross sections. And yeah, I'll, I'll get those. I've, I've written the decay rate section. Uh, you just, you, you know, you're multiplying this probability. We're calculating a probability for these particles to go to those particles. So if you start with one initial particle and go to two or more, that's a decay. And the, the kind of prediction we make for decays is the rate of decay. And that's of course proportional to the probability and uh, to how many particles you have and uh, how many species come off and all of that. You, you know, you, you work in all that stuff. And uh, let's, let's see if there's something simple I can say about that or if I should uh, talk through it at all. Um, let's see. Yeah, here's all my Compton notes. So, uh, yeah, the, <laughs> okay, here's a weird thing. I'd better talk about this because, um, you know, this, this can be disturbing. Uh, if you look at our matrix element, okay, so the, the thing we're really computing is, uh, you know, some, some final state and some uh, initial stuff, uh, IT. So your total scattering matrix is one plus I times this scattered part. We're not interested in the one, that's the stuff that missed. So, you know, we you just go through and, you know, hope nobody's standing straight down from the line. Uh, but uh, this is what actually scatters. And it's that expectation we're computing. So uh, what we have done is to realize, all right, that always has certain terms. Uh, in particular, uh, you know, we get these matrix elements that we've just been writing. So, you know, we're gonna have uh, this matrix element and uh, we've got a two pi, the fourth delta at uh, the sum of all the momenta, conservation of momentum delta function. And, uh, you know, there might be some other normalization, but basically, and I think we stuck an I, you know, I don't know why people stick an I in there, um, but there seems to generally be an I stuck on everything in sight. But now we're gonna square this like that. And that's the reason we've been computing these matrix elements squared, 
The other thing you're squaring is that Dirac delta function. Whoops. What's the square of a Dirac delta function? So, okay, so we integrate over all the uh, outgoing momenta, uh, for example. And that, that sets the sum of the momenta to zero. And in the other delta function, that sets the argument of the other delta function to zero. So, you know, what's sitting out here is del four of zero, um, which we know is a very big number. <laughs> or a very big non-number, depending on what system of, uh, you know, whether you're working in non-standard analysis or not. But the, um, uh, the way to handle that is to uh, use what's called a box normalization. You put everything in a finite box. Now the box can be as big as you like, but what that does is it turns, uh, it, it technically makes your momenta discrete. So you're dealing with a sum and you carry everything through. Uh, and by the time you compute a rate, you've, you've divided out all the volumes of the box. And uh, you have something which, if, as you let the volume go to infinity, stays finite. Uh, I, can, yeah, I can actually work through that if you want to see that. Um, you know, before, before we actually venture into a computation, um, and yeah, you know, I, I could run through that today. I don't know what time is it? It's, you know, we've been going for a while. Uh, you know, I, I think um, let's make some kind of decision about when we're going to, to meet uh, over the summer. Um, could, could I ask you? Could I ask a question about renormalization really quick before sure. we do that? Sure. I don't want to. We don't have to. But no, no, that's that's, that's okay. You're fine. So wait, in some senses, then is renormalization kind of like doing like hyper real numbers? Like I just barely saw that Riemann zeta oh. renormalization where you just define yeah. the series to equal negative twelve. Is that that's, or like whatever it is? Like uh, is that is that in some ways like? Um, yeah, a hyper real definition, like this series diverges, but we're just gonna say call it's it, a number. And we're gonna call it minus 112. No, the, the minus 112 is a rigorous result. Um, it's, I think it's some sort of residual uh, when you do a complex, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, you do some kind of complexi complexification of the whole thing, you're able to actually sum it and uh, approach a limit um, you know, plus some systematically defined divergent part. Uh, I, you know, I've never actually followed that through in detail, but you know, there is there is a rigorous ish reason for the minus one twelfth. But um, no, we're not we're not doing uh, transfinite numbers here. What? Uh, well, yeah, there there are words we put to it, but what happens in QED? And I I hope we can. Uh, identify these divergences. It turns out that um, there, are, there are only, I think it's three divergent quantities in QED. Um, every other divergent thing in QED can be written in terms of those three. And uh, that makes the theory renormalizable. You don't keep at higher and higher order, you don't keep getting new divergences. It's just these same ones over and over. And uh, if you have enough constants in your theory, so in, in QED, it's the mass of the electron and the charge of the electron. And I don't know what the third one is, but, um, but what, you, what you do is you absorb that infinity that, you know, which is a very particular divergent integral. Uh, you, you, the words you say are, you know, that's, uh, that's quantum corrections to the bare mass or the bare charge. And so that diverging number plus that bare charge gives us the charge that we actually measure. And so you've absorbed into the, that infinite quantity into your constants. And once you do that, they're, they're gone from the rest of your calculations. Now, um, there's, there's also, you know, there's a whole field called renormalization group theory. And this is used a lot in condensed matter studies where 
you, you, you look at a system, say in a box, right? Where uh, everything is nicely finite and you, you double the size of the box. You say, well, what happens to each of the parameters of the theory? And typically what happens is, uh, you know, some, some stay the same, some increase and some decrease. Well, the ones that decrease are uh, then unimportant because as you scale up, they're gonna go away. Um, if, you can, uh, if you can redefine your variables to absorb the things that are increasing. So suppose you have you know, two parameters in your theory, mass and charge, and you double the size of the box. And uh, if you say, oh, well, let me replace all the M's by 2M and all the E's by, uh, uh, you know, uh, all the four E's by E and all the two M's by M or something, you know, whatever the scaling is. Now you double it again, you do that same process. Well, uh, you know, in the end, those, those things that actually are diverging, um, you know, are, uh, have, have been renamed, uh, you know, two to the N times as N goes to infinity, but uh, you know, the, the final result of that is what you're going to call M and what you're going to measure in the experiment. So, um, yeah, there is systematic uh, renormalization group um, equations that people work with. You know, people have looked at this in considerable detail. And there are easy rules of thumb for when, when you can get away with doing that and when you can't. And basically, it it comes down to a dimensional analysis. So if, if you have, um, uh, if your, um, what is it? your Lagrangian has terms that uh, go as higher powers than length to the fourth, I think. Uh, some, you know, you, a simple power counting of your fields. Um, you know, if they exceed a certain limit, then, uh, quantum theory is going to give you a new divergence at each uh, order in perturbation theory. Whereas if the number of, uh, you know, the power counting comes out some number less than that, uh, a finite number of uh, renormalizations will get rid of all the infinities and you won't be introducing new infinities at each order in perturbation theory. So uh, yeah, I you know I I hope to look at this in more detail uh, in coming weeks as we delve a little deeper into QED. Um, I need to delve a little deeper into this. I haven't written this part of the book, so I'm racing to to keep up with you guys as as we all work on this. Um, I I'm going to throw a delaying tactic in your way by asking you to do. Uh, some more of these scattering problems, get, get a little better at taking these traces and writing them all down. So I think that's the, that's the thing to anticipate next. Um, if you want something to chew on for the next week, uh, put the masses back in <laughs> and, 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 then, uh, and then let the initial electron be at rest and you know, tell me what angle the photons come off at. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll post the, the cross-section formulas. I'll, I'll post that part of the notes uh, shortly. And um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, you enjoy that, Lyle. That's, that's good. That's good. Uh, so what, what exactly is your project, Lyle? What is my project? I thought you read the uh, outline, right? Yeah, I re just remind me, I, you know. Um, yeah, Dr. Tori had derived uh, with Dr. Anderson uh, many years ago, it was in the 90s actually, some, um, Yeah. what did he call it, lower degree conservation formulas. There were three forms and two forms related to the vacuum Einstein. Right, okay. So and he, he believes that the two forms actually define um, flux integrals through a surface that give us the energy momentum and angular momentum of gravitational waves. Um, now, why it would be important to verify that is that they did their uh, equations completely in general for any metric, uh -huh. whereas most of the equations used now are always done with some sort of a assumption, uh, you know, linearization or something like that. So it would give us a more general form if we can show that the two are the same. Yeah, okay. Yes, I, I do remember it now. Uh, you know, gravitational waves didn't, didn't ring a sure. bell. Sure. But that's a neat project, and yeah, good good luck with that. Uh, the uh, 
yeah. So the rest of us, I think, are studying uh, more of quantum field theory. So what I have in mind is uh, delving a little more deeply into QED, uh, you know, over the next, I don't know, maybe a monthish. Uh, but then um, looking at uh, non-abelian gauge theories, uh, specifically SU2 and SU3, because that gives us a standard model, and then uh, you know do some uh, uh, um, well, you know, write down an action for the standard model. Um, you know, these techniques uh, don't work for the strong interaction. They, they should work for the weak interaction, and we can add some Feynman rules that'll work for the exchange of Ws, and we can look at uh, weak decays a little bit. But uh, for the strong interaction, yeah, um, other measures are required because uh, in addition to the asymptotic character of this perturbation theory, uh, the, the coupling constant is not small for the strong interaction. Now, uh, what I mean by asymptotic, uh, yeah, actually I might have some notes on that. Maybe I'll try and post those, but uh, asymptotic series, the, the thing that um, eventually happens in, in QED even is that the number of diagrams uh, goes up faster than the, the power of the fine structure constant. So you're suppressing things by going to higher and higher order because it's always going to have a fine structure constant squared at you know the next, the next uh, order of interaction. But the number of diagrams goes up, and I forget if it's like end of the end or faster than end of the end, but um, you know, not a power law. So that um, you know, things things can diverge rather badly, uh, not um, within the theory in principle, but with this method of of calculating the transitions. So um, even even in QED. Uh, you're, you know, there's, there's room for improvement in our ability to compute these things. Uh, what's, what's done in, um, for the strong interaction is lattice QCD, where, uh, you know, it's sort of like a box normalization, but now the whole process is, is put on a grid, a uh, discrete grid of, you know, N by N by N by N uh, um, nodes. And you literally have the computer track every path, uh, and you know what the evolution is along each of the um, finite number of paths or countable number of paths. Maybe not all of the countable number, but uh, some some sensible number of the paths uh, across this um, hypercube, and uh, that that gives pretty good results. So you can actually make some predictions for meson masses, proton mass, that sort of thing. Um, and so, so in those in those calculations, they're like they're like tracking renormal local locally renormalized constants through the grid. They're kind of like because everything's so strongly coupled instead of asymptotically coupled, they're kind of having to renormalize at every stage. And so you have to you have to you have to do each path in like independently. You can't you can't average over a bunch of paths. You have to sum each individual path because it's so nonlinear. Is that? Yeah, I, I think the picture is probably a path interval one where you're, you're summing over all histories. So along any given path, you're adding up, you know, e to the i times the action, essentially. Yeah, and you're, you're taking like a path integral kind of, but then you're, you're chunking it. So it's- Yeah, so you're, you're, you're looking at each path one at a time. And then- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put, putting those together, it, you know, keeping track of phases. So yeah, you find some total phase along each path and you you look at the the net result of the interference of all those phases. So it's kind of like finding a local Green's function, but it's a Green's function in in this hypercube dimension. It's like it's depending on how you're how you're oriented in the space, you're going to have a different type of propagator, whether what your local energy is and and whether you're adding spin or what other what other your coupling fields are. Yeah, uh, let's see. Um, hmm. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know if they're using propagators and green functions for this. Uh, yeah, I, I what? Uh, hand wavy. I don't know what oh, they're using. Oh, You're right. Uh, hand no, wavy. I, I, I haven't looked in detail at the lattice 
calculations, but my, uh, my understanding is that you assign, you know, to each strut and each node of the lattice, you, you assign values, right? You, you assign, you know, field values and, uh, you know, actually quite a lot of variables associated with, with each step of the way and they, you know, accumulate what happens. Uh, is anybody pressed for time? I, I, you, you guys are okay, all right. But um, kind of like we did, but, but here we had a universal vertex function. But there, maybe you have to calculate whatever your vertex function is by the path integral will tell you what it is at that point. Well, yeah, you, you know, you, you know, the form of the interaction. I mean, here we have a gamma matrix times some constants. Uh, you know, in QCD, you have the, uh, the SG3 structure constants uh, that are, is what connects the field. So you, you know what the vertex operator would be. Um, now, yeah, each time, each time at each lattice vertex that you, you say, well, what's going to happen at this vertex, you know, there's a certain probability that you're going to, you know, produce three gluons or uh, do nothing or, um, you know, any, anything that the strong interaction allows. Uh, the, the strong interaction is, uh, you know, if you think of the form of the curvature in relativity, right? You've got gamma gamma terms, right? You have things that are nonlinear in, in the metric, nonlinear in the field. Well, the same is true in any non-abelian gauge theory. You have, you have those nonlinear field terms and uh, you know, to take those into account, there's a lot that can happen. Uh, well, let me just say, here's the, here's the kind of thing you're dealing with. You've got, a, a yang mills field looks like this. You, you've got uh, a Lie algebra value two form. So it looks like uh, a Maxwell field, but it's got a, 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 a Lie algebra index on it. And uh, each of your potentials has one of those. So you get a curl of your, uh, of your gauge field. In addition, you get uh, and let's see, I'm useless. What is the, I'm, I'm thinking there's, there may be a half here, but uh, that's, that number is important, but I'm not sure what it is. But then you get the structure constants of the group uh, and a nonlinear term like this. And when you put this in an action, it goes in just like, uh, just like we have f mu nu squared in the uh, in the Maxwell action, now we also sum over sum over that internal group index, the algebra index, and uh, what that means is okay. Uh, you, you've got this. You've got this usual kinetic term. So you get you get that thing squared, that's fine. But you also get uh, a cubed and a to the fourth terms, right? When you square this, you're going to get some a to the fourth stuff with some constants. Uh, when when you take the cross product here, the um, the cross terms, you get these with those. So a derivative coupled to two fields, and what that means in a Feynman diagram is that you have more possible things that can happen. So in E&M, all right, you can, you can absorb or emit a photon if, if you're a, a charged particle. But in these theories, okay, uh, well, um, that can still happen because uh, the, the way this will couple to matter is that you've got, you've got some field with one of these indices and you're taking some uh, group covariant derivative of that and that's going to couple some of these to this field and so you'll have a diagram like this just like you do in E&M but also you're going to have diagrams where uh, well let's uh, use if these are gluons you denote them by a, a curly line like this and this this term squared means that one gluon 
can have a vertex that produces three. So you, you have a vertex like that, that you know, has that structure constant squared as a probability, but uh, or is, you know, that's the vertex operator. And uh, that means that one gluon can just be going along and suddenly become three gluons. Or Professor? with a cross, with a cross term it could become two, yeah. Alex. Is one way to see that, like to use the completeness relation where we're going to boil everything down and then we're going to get, when you have a squared term, you can insert uh, an identity operator between the two and then you'll end up getting a product of two, two, like, okay, uh, yeah, where's this? That, that's, that's the fermions where we do that. And we'll still be able to do that here because, you know, fermions exchange these particles. Uh, but, uh, you know, what, what we'll have will be, uh, say three Dirac fields, right? So we, we may have I D slash uh, psi bar. So we still have we still have Dirac stuff, but this derivative becomes uh, an SU two or SU three covariant derivative. So these guys have an internal index uh, like that A, for example. You've got three of these, you know red, yellow, green, or, you know, red, yellow, black, three, three colors, right? There are three of those. So uh, this covariant derivative uses that connection to, to make uh, uh, this expression behave covariantly or invariantly under SU3 trans, local SU3 transformations. Uh, so, uh, that you're gonna, these guys you're gonna handle very much the same way. You still have asymptotically free fermions. It's just that the interactions they can undergo, you're gonna have a sidebar uh, somewhere in here, right? You're gonna have an A, you're gonna have a, a, a structure constant B, um, A, C, maybe. Uh, what do you have? You'll have a one of these guys with a, with a B maybe in a size C, you know, so some coupling like this, uh, where this, this has an index on it and what happens to that index. Yeah, that index, you know, must have a, you know, there's, there's, there's probably a, a, a slash on that A. Right, that's that's gonna have a gamma matrix in it too. So what you're doing with the fermions is very similar to what we do in QED. Um, and you'll have these uh, outer products, U, U bar, that you'll replace with P slash plus M, or you know, include the spin if you want to include the spin. But in addition, there are non-trivial interactions between the gauge particles. You know, it's as if photons, did you guys do this exercise? You know, it's as if photons could interact with one another. So here's a question I asked you in exercise. I don't know if you've had time to look at exercises. Do photons interact? At fourth order, they do. There you go. Okay, so let's draw the diagram. Um, yeah, we should try and compute this one. Uh, so you have two photons coming in and they can pair produce. And like this and then those emit some photons, and uh, this is probably usually drawn as a square thing. Uh, so two photons in, two photons out, and yet by exchanging uh, a bunch of electrons and positrons, uh, it produces some interaction. So at high enough energy, you really do see photons interacting with other photons. Uh, um, linear Maxwell theory is wrong, right? Electromagnetism, even even pure electromagnetism. Well, no, it's got to be coupled, right? But um, but it is. Uh, but it's it's not linear. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you should have told Feynman. <laughs> uh, so you know you get you get a lot of unexpected things cropping up. Uh, uh, hmm, hmm, hmm. So, yeah, so rushing off into nonlinear gauge theory here. Uh, meanwhile, <laughs> the girl of the girl. 
all those curls for nothing. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, the differential forms still work. <laughs> now, Alex. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, so the, the first order of business, well, let's see, uh, maybe second, uh, first order of business is to, you know, catch our breath a little bit. But um, what I'm thinking is maybe we'll have uh, longer classes, maybe once a week, um, or, you know, really short classes seven times a week. What, what, what do you guys want to do? Um, what works best with your schedules? Uh, you know, um, is there a particular day that uh, would be best? Um, you know, I, do you do well uh, reading the notes and working on your own, or do you need me to go step by step through uh, through the notes? Uh, you know, that kind of that kind of thing. Uh, you know, tell me what the best way to learn what you don't already know is going to be. Uh, I'm a fan of um, reading the notes and um, and uh, reviewing it, or like um, going through either exercises and or problems. Uh -huh. yeah, and uh, yeah. So I'll I'll keep trying to add exercise. Uh, yeah, there are going to be some more problems. Uh, you know, I I think I said one of the things that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, Lyle, if we're going to start at seven and end at seven p.m., you got to come. <laughs> uh, but um, you know, I, I think I think having an extended class, going as long as we need to go to answer any questions and maybe introduce some new ideas. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to be saying yet because I haven't written that far in the book. I've gotten as far as uh, as. Uh, decay rates and uh, differential cross sections. And I'll post that pretty soon. But uh, yeah, if you can read through the book and do exercises, then um, let's, let's, let's try getting together once a week for a uh, bit. Let's pick a time where it's open-ended if we can manage that with uh, you know, whatever four or five people we're, we're uh, dealing with here. Um, let's see, uh, yeah, I don't know, um, you know, some of you probably have research meetings, you know, I'm, I'm sure you do, Alex, uh, um, Guillermo, who are you working with, Guillermo? Tori? Uh, yeah, okay. And uh, yeah, I'm working with Eli and Tyler. What are you What are you doing? You uh, got some research going on? Yeah, I'll be work, we're we're talking it out tomorrow. I'm with Dr. Anderson and Dr. Uh, Tori. So uh huh. We'll, yeah. we'll work. I assume we'll be working something out tomorrow. We'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay. So um, so maybe we have no clue when uh, when some of you are going to have research meetings. Uh, you know, that's going to be at the whim of your research advisors, no doubt. Uh, so uh, let's, we may, we may need to, <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I keep getting distracted by the chat. Uh, let's see. That's good. Yeah, let, let me, um, yeah, now, you know, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, finish up some notes on cross sections, uh, post uh, an enhanced problem. Uh, uh, in order for me to give you all grades for, uh, for this semester, uh, send me, send me your results for problems, problem one and problem two, right? Uh, problem one was ages ago, that was the midterm, and you probably already sent me that. So, you know, send, send me what you've got on this, uh, you know, sometime in the next uh, day or so, and I'll, you know, put grades in the hat and draw them. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, you know I, I feel you've all been, uh, you know, sufficiently attentive that you're actually able to do a QED problem. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's a terrific goal as was noted in chat, actually. Um, very cool. You're doing QED. Uh, 
you know, um, uh, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you another problem soon to do that. And let's, uh, uh, and I don't know if I want to commit to next Monday or not. Um, but, uh, let's see, what's, what's the best way to do this? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if Monday is going to be the best day of the week to do this. Uh, but <laughs> what can we do? Say Tuesday? Uh, um, no idea. No idea. Uh, why don't Why don't you? Um, yeah. Well, all right. One thing I want to do today is see about getting a Canvas site set up for this summer course. I don't know what's involved with that. I've got to call City and you know see see how that's done what it will take uh, a nice thing about that is that we can set up automatic recordings for the meetings so you guys will have access to to listen to our discussions again as, as many times as you like uh, but uh you know for for lack of anything better to suggest let's let's uh, think loosely about next Monday at noon again. Uh, but yeah, watch, um, watch, watch the, the canvas site or, uh, do you all check your email? No, <laughs> eventually, uh, yeah, it's, it's all sort of text these days, isn't it? It's, it takes some getting used to for me. I've been I, <laughs> I've been using email longer than most of you have been alive, <laughs> so uh, it's you know it's a you know bit of mind swap to you know get get over to oh doodle poll that's a good idea. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't think any of your schedules are really set yet. Uh, you probably would have told me if they were so. Um, you know, Eli, you're busy all the time. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll see to that. Uh, but, um, you know, other, other than that, uh, I don't know what, uh, what the schedules are going to be like. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on all venues, um, Canvas, email, uh, Doodle. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that that may be the way to go once once people know their schedules a little bit. Uh, we'll we'll find some time. But I, I would like to, I, yeah. In in meeting with your uh, other commitments, um, try to uh, <laughs> try to try to have some open time so that we can have an open ended meeting sometime or other. Uh, you know, because these problems get long, and we may want to just. Do a whole problem one afternoon, you know. Um, you know, I, I worked through this one in about three hours yesterday afternoon, and I didn't get the cross term right in that amount of time. But I think I got it, you know, almost there this morning. So, you know, these these can be worked in a finite amount of time, and you know, some of the answers are uh, kind of cool and standard results that we should look at. So uh, that said, um, yeah, be alert. Uh, I've got all your um, email addresses. So mail, mail me your problems, you know, fin finish up this, uh, these um, uh, three traces, these uh, squared matrix elements, send those to me, um, you know, sooner rather than later. Uh, you know, let's, let's say, you know, by, by uh, let's see, shall we just say midnight tonight? Everybody good with that? Yeah, okay, so send me what you've got today, by, by end of day today. Um, you know, that doesn't preclude, you know, if you wanna go back and do more detail or put in the masses or anything, uh, that's fine. But uh, send me what you've got by the end of day today. And, um, you know, uh, among other things, that guarantees I'll have all of your email addresses so we can be in touch. And, uh, you know, probably meet sometime next week, but I don't know my schedule either. Uh, so let's let's we'll meet when we have a little more information. So good, good to see you. Yeah, and I think I think we'll have fun with this. You know, I I'm still I'm still thinking that you know we'll see. So more QED, get the techniques down, 
standard model stuff, you know, I've got know, uh, several dozen pages on that. And then, uh, uh, the, you know, string theory, you know, we'll do some string theory later. Uh, you know, at least, uh, you know, dabble into the basics and see how some of that works. So it should be, should be a fun, uh, a fun activity over the summer. Meanwhile, thank you all for your attention this semester. You know, I, I feel like this has been really successful. It's, it's not always the case that we, you know, really get to QED and um, very rare to get to it in one semester. So you guys have done a good job here, all of you. And I'm looking forward to more. Thank you, Professor. You too. It's been a good time. Good. Well, we'll have more good times this summer then. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you've enjoyed it. I, I certainly have. I've been- Probably one of my more favorite classes that I've taken. Well, thank you. I mean, yeah. I'm I, curious. I think, it's, I think it's one of my favorite classes too. You know, it's, it, it's just been a good group, you know, good solid questions, uh, learning a lot. And um, yeah, I, I've enjoyed it too. So see you all again soon. And yeah, <laughs> you're, you're welcome. You're, you're welcome. Thanks for your attention. I'll see you all soon. Talk to you sometime next week then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll be in we'll, touch. We'll figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah. So okay. we, don't have to keep, yes. we don't have to keep the masses though in this calculation? No, no. Drop the masses. Oh, okay. So much Alex, you, Alex, you haven't been paying attention, have you? <laughs> oh, no. I kept all the masses. Can I? Um, can I get bonus points? Can I get like candy or some shit? <laughs> all right. So um, let's see. What? Uh, uh, yeah. So have you kept the masses? Yeah, I kept the masses. I got it whittled down, and the last thing I was going to do was to turn everything back into U S and T variables. But I got yeah, I yeah. got it whittled down just in terms of the the one one two momentums and the masses. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the one two momentums. So oh. I got it. The ingoing and outgoing momentums and yeah, then yeah, masses. right. Momentum. Yeah. Um, yeah. So good. Uh, yeah. You know, if you've kept it all, that's great. Uh, is that yeah. is that what kind of what kind of is that kind of the 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 form you want the answer in is just in terms of in and outgoing momentum. Is that T1 uh, and T2? Yeah. Is that what you're supposed to get? Yeah, or, or in terms of Mandelstam variables. Yeah, but, but those uh, are the, just in general, those are what we're solving in terms of P1, and then we're going to integrate when we do cross sections shift. Yeah, so to do cross sections, you're going you're gonna to integrate over, you know, whatever you don't measure and uh, basically boil it down to, you know, a final, one of the final momenta d omega, uh, you know, over, uh, you don't integrate over angles because you want to still see the angular dependence of one of the outcoming particles. So, yeah, so you only integrate over part of the, the uh, momentum variables, not all of them. Um, I've got to remember how to do this. I haven't done this in several years, but yeah, just, just, I just, just, I just don't know if I'm doing it. So just to get, uh, yeah, but, but yeah, for, you know, what's required tonight is, uh, uh, just com computing those squared matrix, uh, traces, you know, yeah. so yeah, getting that down to the momenta. Yeah. Yeah. Write that in terms of Mandelstam variables, cause it's more concise, a little easier to, to check. Um, as long as we know what S and T and U are. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know what and, I was thinking. It's definitely the T channel, but I guess I see what you mean about the labeling, but it's definitely the T channel, so. Yeah, yeah, I, I ended up calling it a T channel. Um, it is, totally is. You know, I, yeah, I, yeah, I think it probably is a T channel, <laughs> but yeah, it really depends how you label your diagram. Uh, yeah. and it, it shouldn't, but you know, it somehow does. But um, yeah. you know, as as long as you define things, uh, you know, oh, T is this and U is that, uh, then 
relative to this diagram, then you know what you're talking about. So that's fine. So yeah, it, well, sounds, it sounds like you got the, did you have any questions you wanted to zoom I in? I thought I did last night, but I guess uh -huh. it's, it's actually, I was I was actually fine. I, sorry, I had, I had to go do it some errands this morning. I had to go to the bank and stuff. Oh, I, I you know, I was, so. I was redoing the calculation actually this morning. So cool. yeah, I, I didn't want to meet this morning, but um, yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, if, if you want to, if you want to zoom later, if some questions come up, you know, we can do that. I was just going to ask, I, I just found out, I forgot that my blood scholarship letter is due today. So I'm just going to, oh. I'm going to go type that. It's just a thanks yes. letter real yes. quick. Um, go do it. Yeah. But so, so I think actually, like you're saying, once you, it just took so long to get my head around what was going on. But once we're there, running through the calculation is like an hour or two, maybe. So I think, I think I'll be time fine. But if you, maybe yeah. if you were free this, this evening, would that be, what, when would be a good time to yeah, reach out well, to if I needed early, to early evening can work, you know. Yeah, five, like, six, four. Oh, yeah, five or six is fine. Yeah. Okay, I'll shoot yeah. for that. So. Okay. Yeah, so. uh yeah, why, why don't you pop me an email when when you have questions you want to discuss? Okay, or when I have an answer to to see if if I'm crazy or not. Yeah, yeah, you know, a, a lot of a, a lot of the folks have sent me, you know, like uh, a PDF or a photo or something of their their diagrams and their matrix elements to check that before they go off trying to compute traces. Uh, yeah, and, you know, so I, I check that over for them, uh, you know, to make sure they're have the right starting stuff. Uh, okay, um, it's, I it's, could probably. I yeah, should you, do you, you don't have to do that, but you are you're welcome to, you know, if you want to run something okay. by me before you calculate a bunch of traces. But you know, we we had them up here, right? We had the matrix elements up here, so you're it you're computing the square of each of those and and the and the product of one times the conjugate of the other. And, uh, you know, that's that's what's due tonight. Okay, yeah, I, I think I can get that in. So, okay, thank you. All right, good, yeah. I'll, so, I'll, I'll send you an email around that time though, probably with some questions. Okay, all right, well, sounds good. All thank right. you, Professor. You, later. you bet, see you, Alex. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.